Recently, I did a video on SGTK menu, which is basically a couple of pre-configured GTK interfaces for doing things like an application grid, an application launcher, an application menu, and things of that nature. But in the comment section for that, a couple of people recommended another application by the name of JG Menu. Now, JG Menu is a little bit different. As the name would suggest, it's focused just around working with a menu, but you actually define exactly how you want the menu to be structured. That might not make much sense right now, but I'll go through it as we go through the video. Now, if you just go and run JG Menu by itself, it's just going to run as an application menu, but this is not how you should be using the application. If this is all you want, there are much better solutions you can go with that don't have anywhere near the same level of customizability. If you're going to be running JG Menu, you're going to be looking at two different files. Those files are the CSV input file and the config file. Now, I say CSV very, very loosely. So, the data part of it is CSV, but there's a lot of extensions to it that make it its own custom format. Now, if all you want is a replacement for dmenu run, getting data into JG menu is absolutely dead simple because the way it works is any data on a new line is considered a new entry inside of the menu. So let's just test this out with the ls command. Obviously, we won't be able to run the results like commands, but it will still demonstrate what I mean. So ls pipe that into JG menu dash dash simple dash dash simple basically means take data from standard input so if we go and run this now as we can see all of the files inside of my home directory and all of the folders are all on separate lines if i go and click on something in here like let's say my desktop it tries to run desktop as a command so if instead of doing that i was to do something like say echo i don't know alacrity or something into jg menu now we have one entry in here if i click on this it will launch alacrity Okay, that's simple enough, but sometimes we don't want the name of the command to be the same as the name of the menu entry. For example, let's say you're trying to launch up something like LF, which is a terminal application, and running without a terminal isn't really going to do much. So in this case, let's go and echo in the file manager as the name, and this is where we start getting into the CSV part. So the second value in the CSV is going to be the command that's run. The third part is going to be the icon you want to use. The fourth part is the working directory. The fifth part is the metadata. The sixth part is execute without sh-c wrapper. But for this video, we're just going to be working with the first two. The rest of them can be looked at inside of the documentation. So let's go and make the command alacrity dash e lf and then pipe this into jg menu dash dash simple and as we can see we have a file manager down here but if i go and click on this it's actually going to launch up lf now just before we get into working with a file there is another option that we could have used and that option was going to be jg menu dash dash v simple so v simple basically is the same thing as simple except it also goes and disables icons and if you have a jg menu rc file which is the config file it disables that as well now to actually use a file we have to go and specify it with an option so in this case the option is going to be dash dash csv dash file and one of the ones made earlier is bar.csv and I know that it looks a little bit broken right now, and that's because the way it's laid out is reliant on my normal config file. But as we can see, there is far more going on inside of this menu. For example, we have a submenu here that opens up another context menu, or this one right here, which actually replaces this main menu with a whole different menu, or say this one right here, which goes and automatically defines a filter that we can search with. So all of these things are very easy to specify, and this is one of the things I do like about JG Menu. While the syntax is a little bit weird, you'll see that it's pretty easy to work with. Now, while there is full mouse support, there are some key bindings you probably should know as well. So you can go and navigate through the list by using your arrow keys. And if there's a part where there's a sub menu, if you go and click in the direction of the arrow, it'll take you into the menu. And then obviously clicking the other direction will take you out of the menu. Same with any of these ones that replace the root menu. So if we go and click into that one, it goes into that. And then clicking the other direction, it takes us out of that. But we could also go and press enter on any of those as well, as well as going in the other direction by pressing backspace. And also, if you just start typing, it'll start doing a search without you having to do anything else. None of those key bindings should be that crazy to remember. Here is an input file I defined earlier that we're going to be modifying throughout the video. So just running this inside a JG menu, there's nothing really too crazy going on in here. 
basically it's going to let us launch up a couple of applications. So Brave, LF, and PCMan FM. And I've also defined custom names for all of them as well. So if we go and click on the file manager one, as we can see, it launches that one just fine. So let's say I wanted to have a separator between some of the data. So to actually do that, all we need to do is put a caret symbol there, write the sep command, and then brackets, and this will give us a very simple line separator. So if we go and run this now, as we can see, there is a very small line between those elements. But we don't just have to have a line separator, we could also have, say, like a a named separator as well. If we go and pass in a name to this one, let's just call it, I don't know, sep for example, and then rerun the command. As we can see, there is still a separator here, but this time it's actually got that name there. I think the first submenu type we should look at is the sub context menu. So in this case, there's going to be two things we need to define. Those are going to be checkout and tag. So checkout defines where the submenu is actually going to be located inside of the actual menu itself. So in this case, let's give it the name uh, submenu, for example. And then the second part is going to be where we actually define the checkout. So in this case, checkout is being used as a command. So let's just put in checkout. And then inside of the brackets, the brackets is important here. This doesn't define the name of the menu entry. This defines what tag the submenu needs to be using. So in this case, I'm just gonna make the submenu tag submenu. And then let's go and define the tag for that. So let's just write tag. And then anything under the tag is going to be inside of the submenu. So once again, we have to make sure the names do line up. And let's go and put, say, a bunch of just gibberish in here. And if we go and run this now, so jg menu dash dash csv dash file equals test.csv. As we can see, we have a submenu here, and then inside of that submenu is all of that gibberish we just wrote. Now the next option is going to change the root window, so the option is going to be called root. So let's go with the same sort of name scheme from earlier, just call this one root menu. And then the command we're going to be running, as I said, is going to be called root. And inside of here, once again, the name is going to be used to define the tag that it actually links to. So let's call this one root menu. And then down here, there doesn't have to be a line separating them. I just like to have it there just so it's a bit easier to see what's going on inside of the document. Let's go and make a tag and call this one root menu. And let's just once again put some absolute garbage in here. I, I don't know why I'm letting it autocomplete like that. That's perfectly fine. And run this again. Uh, close out of that, run it again. As we can see, we still have the submenu there. That works perfectly fine still. And now there's another option here for the root menu. So if we go and click on this one, as we can see, it replaces everything inside of the menu with all of this gibberish we have here. But if we go and back out of that, it will take us back to the main menu. Now, one neat thing is you can actually stack these. So let's say you want to have a context menu inside of the context menu. That's going to work perfectly fine. So let's call this one uh, sub context, for example. And then let's go and make a new tag down the bottom here. And if we go and run this again, as we're going to see inside of the sub menu, we actually have another sub menu option. I didn't give it a name this time, that's perfectly fine. But the sub menu inside of the sub menu works perfectly fine. And you can do this as many times as you want. So I mentioned earlier that you can just start typing whenever and will automatically start filtering the menu elements. But sometimes you may want to have a predefined filter. Let's say you have a application launcher that has some web browsers in it and terminals and CLI applications and whatever other applications you may have grouped together. If you don't want to go and search through that entire list, a predefined filter might actually be pretty useful. So let's go and make the filter. We'll call it filter. And then the option, as you would expect at this point, is just called filter. And then inside of the brackets is what the filter is going to be. So I'm just going to make the filter brave. So when we go and click on this, it should only show brave. And if we go and click on it, as we can see, we have Brave and then also the filter because Brave is, I guess, a part of the filter. Personally, I would have preferred if the filter was just, you know, filtered out. Now, you don't just have to have text as items inside of the menu. Sometimes you may want to have things like a rectangle or an icon or maybe even a search bar with some predefined text. And the way we go and define those is by using widget. So to define a widget, we start the line with an at symbol and then the name of the widget. So in this case, we're going to do a search 
the next part is going to be the action. So if you're running, say, an icon or a rectangle, and when you click on it, you want some application to be launched, that would be the action there. But in this case, we don't want that. Then we have the X, the Y, the width, the height, and then if you want them, a corner radius as well. After that is the horizontal alignment and the vertical alignment, but at this stage, they haven't actually been implemented. After that is the foreground and background color. So let's go and define this one as FF, 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 and then the background color as, I don't know, 333333. And then the last part is if you want any text inside of the widget. So in this case, I'm going to make the text type to search. And if we go and run this now, we should have a search widget at the top of our menu. So as we can see, we have one right here. It says type to search. I've defined the height and width to be 100. So it's going to be a bit off of the top. And if we start typing in here, it's going to show what we've typed inside of this little search here. Now, obviously, as you can see, it's directly on top of the menu, and this can be fixed inside of the config file. Basically, the CSV file here is to define what actually goes inside of the menu, and then any more complex formatting after that is done inside of the config. Now, there's another way we can define the menu as well, and that is through the CSV command, where basically we generate the CSV as we actually need it, and that is how the original menu we saw at the start of the video, this one right here, is actually working. So if we go and run jg menu underscore run, uh, and then pass in the p menu option, this is the menu that was being used there. And we can actually go and make our own versions of this. There's nothing special about this. I believe this is just a Python script actually. As long as it outputs text, it's going to be perfectly fine. So if we go and run jg menu uh, dash dash csv dash cmd, and then pass in that command just there. So jg menu underscore run p menu. As we can see, we get the exact same menu from earlier. Now, while the configuration for the menu isn't super well documented, the configuration for the aesthetics of the application done in the JG menu RC actually is. So if we go over to our config and go down to JG menu, you're going to have to go and make this folder yourself. And then inside of here, you're going to make a file called JG menu RC. And this file basically lets you define everything about how you want the application to look. I'm not going to go into what most of this does because the names are pretty self-explanatory. If you go into the man page for JG Menu, you're going to see in here, if we scroll down just a bit, every single option we can define in the config file is pretty well explained in here. And I'd recommend coming here to see what any of them do. There is also a pretty good example file over on the GitHub as well, where it has most of the options defined. This is actually the one that I'm using. And you can go and very easily play around with stuff without having to go and scroll through this and write everything yourself. Along with there being really good examples of menus you can make as well. For example, like this one right here, which is very similar to what you get with something like Rofi. Ultimately, I would say that Rofi is probably considerably more powerful, especially if you go on places like Unix Porn and see just some of the crazy things people do with that application. But I still think JG Menu is a pretty cool application, and I'm sure someone has a pretty cool use case for it. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, David Monsters, I will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie Joseph, Mitchell Peter, the Stephen Tony Tushar, and all of my two dollar supporters. If you'd like to go support my work, the links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, start, leave pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast. I bump my mic. Tech over T. That's not the name. It is Tech over T. Not I bump my mic. Uh, if you want to go watch this content on a platform that isn't YouTube, it's still going to be just as poorly structured. You can go check out my bit shoot and my Odyssey. So I think that's going to be everything for me and I'm out.